For decades now, China's economic miracle has been marveled at and admired. Socialists all over the world, but in particular in the West, have dreamed of some similar kind of governance. High-speed railway networks crossing the entire country, a strong central government, and strong economic growth just to tip it all off. It is now starting to seem though that China's economic miracle is all based on a lie, and the last decade has been a slow but steady unraveling of that mirage. It was simply an illusion, a bubble that was growing and growing, and eventually it was always going to pop. This bubble all started a few decades ago as the Chinese property sector started to truly boom, but it will end in the 2020s as this property bubble actually collapses. It's reached a tipping point and the world is finally starting to pay attention. Now, two months ago, we got news that banks started putting holds on people's deposits within their own infrastructures. If you were living in China and you went to take out money from your bank account, the bank would say something on the lines of, yeah, sure, but you can only take out this much or you can only take it out in a week or so. If you then go back a week later, the bank would say, okay, fine, but now you can take out even less and you, of course, are going to panic at that prospect. You're going to go out and tell your friends what's happening. You're going to tell your family and those people are going to do the same things as well. Soon enough, everyone with cash inside these financial institutions realizes what's happening. The bank just has no money. These people head to those banks to try and get their money out first so that they don't lose their entire life savings because what on earth else could they really do in that situation? The simple truth is though that the bank is already struggling and now they have to pay out all the cash they have to their depositors and they just can't do it. At this point, Chinese banks just decided to hold all withdrawals across the entire board and we had what's called a bank run where every customer of these financial institutions found themselves out of pocket. This process has already started in China. It started back in April with four rural banks in the Henan province. Of course, there was damage control going on at the time and the worldwide media didn't really pay too much attention to it back then, but they're starting to pay attention to it now banks were trying to limit the bad press. They were putting out plans saying that people will get their money out on Friday and then when that deadline came and went, they said, okay, maybe not this week, but it'll be next week. Stay patient, it will all be fine. But of course, it wasn't fine at all. As customers realized that their hard-earned cash had disappeared into thin air, they started to protest. And at first, they were fairly small protests. 20 people or so standing outside a bank asking for their money back. But there's so much money lost that of course those protests were bound to grow. These citizens started to bring signs, they started to chant. We saw TV crews and journalists start to turn up and actually cover these protests and we saw media coverage all across the world as news of these protests and of the bank runs and the financial collapse that was looming started to spread. As this happened, the protests got a little bit more organized and they began to reach a tipping point. The Communist Party and the police and the banks all got together and decided to collude to ensure that this stopped because something had to be done from their point of view. Overnight, new legislature was put into place across China, which basically turned bank deposits into investment products, which meant that these citizens who had put their money in what they thought was savings account had now been forced to accept that they were no longer savings accounts and they were now investment products, which meant they had no legal recourse or legal right to demand the banks pay them back. It was at this point that the Communist Party picked a side and they chose the financial institutions ahead of their own citizens. At this point, the Communist Party and the police also started to act to protect these banks first. They sent hundreds of secret police in to break up protests. Hundreds of men in their droves, all wearing weirdly the exact same outfit, went into these protests and started to attack these protesters with absolutely no warning, while the police sat idly by and just watched it all happen. Now, while this action was enough to break up protests in those individual specific circumstances, it wasn't enough to break the spirit of those protesters in general, so the very next day, the protesters returned to their usual activities. The Chinese Communist Party, though, wasn't about to accept defeat, so they started to use everything at their disposal to ensure that these protests would stop. They used social credit scores to stop people from traveling towards protests. This is a massive database and system that covers and tracks every single Chinese citizen and all of their actions as well. When a person has a bad score, they can't use their bank card, they can't get a taxi, they can't get a train or a plane ticket, they can't even get or use a phone or the internet at all. The Communist Party was determined to ensure that this unrest would stop and so they used every tool available at them, but even this alone wasn't sufficient to stop all of the protests. 
It was at this point that the Communist Party said enough is enough and it's time to end the protest altogether. Now they have fairly good experience with this sort of action. If you remember, there was a certain event around about 30 years ago in a place called Tiananmen Square where the People's Liberation Army, which is ironically named to say the least, attacked civilians with tanks and murdered thousands of innocent people. Of course, most Chinese citizens remember those events dearly and they knew what was coming next. China began to threaten to send the tanks in to stop these current bank protests and they started parading tanks through various cities across the country to ensure that everyone knew what would happen next if the protests didn't die down. The threat was very clear, leave or die, and so finally the CCP did manage to break the back of those protests but the problem obviously isn't fixed though. These banks are still collapsing and actually the situation is getting worse, not better. These people have still lost all their money. These citizens are still unhappy and distraught at the actions of the Communist Party after losing their life savings. Just because the protests aren't necessarily as public as they once were doesn't mean that the civil dissent isn't still real and things are really quite bad in China. But where did this entire process actually start? Well, for decades, the Communist Party of China wanted a strong economy because a stronger economy means a stronger country and it means more influence for the Communist Party both at home and overseas. Now, for a long time, they pursued disastrous command economy processes where resources and where they would go was dictated by the state and not by what consumers wanted. That though started to change in the latter half of the 20th century and they adopted a limited form of capitalism to try and grow their wealth. Of course, this form of capitalism was still hugely influenced by the government though and the biggest example of this is of course the property and infrastructure development markets. The Communist Party wanted new cities built, they wanted new apartment blocks, more homes and they wanted to help urbanise their population to try and make them wealthier and make the country more influential. As a result of this, the Communist Party from every single different level encouraged the building of apartment blocks. Local governments made almost all of their tax revenue from that system as well. Now in this process of rapidly urbanizing their population, they suddenly found that actually the country didn't really need any more homes, but they didn't want this economic growth to stall, so they just kept on building. They took apartments that used to be homes and they turned them into investment products. The idea was that you could build anything in China, it could literally be a concrete shell with no livability at all, but it would still sell to an investor because of the extent of the property market bubble. Across China today, there exist ghost cities, entire cities and regions where not a single person lives in them, they are just concrete shells that were sold and built for profit. In essence, we saw the growth and the propagation of the world's largest bubble in history, way bigger than anything you've seen with cryptocurrency, NFTs, and even the US housing market bubble of 2006. Of course though, this system wouldn't last forever because no bubble can. Property prices had soared and suddenly it became unattainable for citizens to actually buy their own home and they started to get disenfranchised with the entire system. The Communist Party decided that it was time to turn off the money tap and they decided to rein it all in. So they put into place the three red lines policy. Now the details of the policy really aren't too important actually, but what it did do is it made it far harder for property developers to acquire debt to build more apartments. Suddenly, these companies which had operated for decades with no restrictions on how much debt they could hold at all, found themselves incapable of acquiring any more capital. Of course, this entire industry though was built entirely upon debt. Without it, it couldn't function at all and none of these half-built development projects could actually be finished at all. It turned out that these developers were massively over leveraged into the trillions of dollars and without building more homes, there was simply no way for them to pay off their existing debt and they had no ability to build more homes without acquiring more debt. Simply put, there was no way out for the entire market. Citizens all over China started to realize what was going on as well. Home prices started to fall and they've now been falling every single month for well over a year at this point. Property developers started to default on their debt payments and they just had no cash and no way to raise cash either so they had no way out. These developers started to collapse and they are some massive names that you've probably heard of like Evergrande, Fantasia and Country Garden and they're all falling apart right in front of our eyes. This is all because of the property market bubble bursting and there's just no end in sight, but of course the problems don't stop there. The banking collapse that we're currently seeing develop in China itself is just like what we saw in 2007 and 8 in the US following our housing market crash. 
Now, why is it all linked? Well, because these banks finance the developers that are now crashing. And when a developer stops paying their debts, when they go bankrupt, when they default and go out of business, what happens to the bank that lent them that money? Well, they're never getting that capital back either. And so they also start to die. Of course, as this was a property market bubble, banks all over China used creative ways to finance their property development. They created savings accounts which would guarantee their investors 15% returns year over year. That money went to developers and now it's gone. They sold mortgages and packaged them up and sold them onto other financial institutions so that they could then go on to sell more mortgages as well and the money behind those debts are gone too. Of course, they literally gave out loans to these developers and they literally bought company bonds from these developers as well and all of that capital is gone. This banking collapse and this property collapse is the same thing, it's just different faces of the same coin. People put their hard-earned cash into savings accounts and the banks and the financial institutions that make up China's market, they gambled it on property always going up. It was eerily similar to exactly what happened in the West in the past, just on an absolutely massive, even greater scale. The worst thing about it all though, is that the Chinese people were told that the Communist Party is different, that it's a good government that cares for its citizens. They mocked the West for the great financial crisis and the property bubble that we saw. They said that capitalism was evil and that their system was the only way forward. But they've now done the exact same thing, but on an absolutely massive scale. The worst thing about this all though, is that there's just no way out for innocent Chinese people. If you protest, you might get murdered by the People's Liberation Army. You might get dragged away by the secret police. You might get thrown into a labor camp. But what's the alternative for these innocent people? You lose everything that you ever worked for, all of your money, your life savings, and you let the corrupt politicians that make up this country take it all from you. I honestly don't know for sure where this will go at all, and no one really does. My bet is that this country will return to full-on communism, there will be a lack of free markets on the whole, and there'll be even more control over the populace. The property market will probably collapse, and the Communist Party will just say, fine, no one owns property anymore, so you can't have a collapse. They'll nationalize this entire industry. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but that would be my bet. What I do know for sure, though, is that even if I'm wrong on that, I guarantee that this won't end well for the innocent people that are actually being hurt here. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. It really does help. If you want to join our exclusive community, then check out our Patreon. You get access to our Discord server and extra content like access to my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. Thank you all for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.